As we continue to discuss concepts of quantum computing from an application's perspective, we naturally come across an infamously recurring bunch of characters in computer science, Alice and Bob. Now, these individuals were first mentioned sometime in 1978 in a paper written by a group of MIT researchers called A Method from Obtaining Digital Signatures and Public Key Crypto Systems. Now, Alice and Bob were initially described as two users of some crypto system who wanted to send a message to one another. Now, as the years progressed, their backstory developed a little bit more with one researcher calling Alice and Bob reason to foresee, another describing them as individuals in the stock trading system. In the words of John Gordon, who spent a significant portion of one of his 1984 talks in Zurich, Switzerland, on Alice and Bob, coding theorists are concerned with two things. First, and most importantly, they are concerned with the private lives of two people who are called Alice and Bob. The other thing coding theorists are concerned with is information. And information indeed encapsulates a large part of any situations involving Alice, Bob, and and later their frenemy Eve. Now, reverting our focus back to the primary application of these characters, we stumble inadvertently upon cryptography and more specifically quantum cryptography. Now, this concept becomes especially important when considering, for example, the use of the internet and general online security. Say Alice and Bob want to send letters to one another. When a message is encrypted, usually both the sender and receiver of the said message have some pairing of sibling keys that allows them to encode and decode the message. There are two parts to the pairing of keys, the public key and the private key. Key. Now, Alice shares the public key with everyone in the world, so anyone can use this public key to encode a message to send to Alice. However, Alice keeps the private key for herself, such that she's the only individual who can decode the message. Think of the public key as the key that locks the message for anyone who wants to send something to Alice, and the private key as the key that unlocks this message. Now, Bob uses the public key to send a message to Alice, and if he uses a different public key, Alice will not be able to decrypt the message as the private key she holds does not match the one Bob used. Typically, when we discuss some when attempting to intercept the message being sent it is not a case of attempting to break the key itself, but rather stealing the key from your computer. And that's the easy way out, of course. Most encryption protocols are insanely difficult to break. However, of all the encryption protocols out there, only the Vernum cipher has been mathematically proven to be entirely secure. The protocol was developed by Gilbert Vernum, an American scientist in the midst of World War I in 1917. The hope had been that the Germans, who were seen as the opposition of the Americans during the First World War, would be unable to crack any encoded messages sent during this time period carrying classified information. Much of the internet we use today uses what is known as RSA encryption, a protocol created in 1977 that stands for Vest Shamir Adelman, named after three of its inventors at MIT. The RSA protocol functions by encrypting information using keys composed of massive integers. Say, Bob's message, which is encrypted using the RSA protocol, is sent to Alice. In order for Alice to decode the message, she must have a key that factors Bob's massive integer into its prime factors. Mind you, it's relatively easy to create the massive number in a reasonable amount of time. Multiplication is a relatively easy feat for the average computer, and the issue comes when the computer is in fact asked to factor a given number it does not have the key to. Even a number composed of the product of two prime numbers could take a classical computer thousands of years, many human lifetimes, to deconstruct and determine the factors of. In other words, it could take thousands of years for an eavesdropper to break into Alice and Bob's encrypted communication network. This eavesdropper is commonly referred to as Eve. This is where quantum computers and cryptography comes into play. A few years shy of two decades after the publication of the RSA encryption protocol, Peter Shore published a paper that turned heads. Now, in short, Shore's algorithm proposes the use of superposition and entanglement, both fundamental components behind quantum computers that theoretically is capable of factoring a massive number in a fraction of the time it would take a classical computer to perform the same operation. For example, determining the factorization of a 4,000-digit number would take thousands of years for a classical computer to process, where Shore's algorithm algorithm postulated that it would take a quantum computer approximately a day to achieve the same goal. His algorithm understandably made waves in the field of cryptography as it not only demonstrated the potential for quantum computers but could ideally overturn what had been assumed for so long was a decently secure internet encryption protocol. Alright, so that is a brief look at the area of quantum cryptography and an introduction to our newest friends, Alice and Bob. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out and check the Community Quantum Tech website. And as always, stay curious and keep on learning. Thank you!